Yes, sir. It's Tuesday. Waiver Wire featured film coming at your face holes right now. Heading into week five. We got some spicy names on the waiver wire today, especially for you super flex people. We've got a bunch of quarterback injuries. I'm going to be uh, lightly breezing through my waiver wire rankings, which are up on bdge.co for y'all big dog members. The membership is a, a monthly membership on bg.co. You'll see uh, products or become a member on the top. You'll get the waiver wire rankings, fab suggestions, whether or not you want to spend your number one waiver wire on it, as well as our in-season weekly rankings. Access to the Discord, where you get access to the private Q and Assault, whatever. All right, y'all don't want to hear about that shit. I get it, whatever. Stop yelling at me. Let's tuck our shirts in. Ah, God. So if you're in a super flex league, we'll be looking at a dude like Kenny Pickett who kind of had a good game, kind of had a bad game. Fine for fantasy because he rushed in to score two. Uh, 10 for 13 through three picks. But if anyone watched the game, you know that two of them were not his fault. One of them was his fault. He's a rookie. He's going to have a lot of faults. However, Pickett's a guy that I liked. First round draft capital. I liked him at school. Thought he was good in Pittsburgh. And now he's playing with a very, very good group of weapons. So you have Kenny Pickett playing with Deontay and Pat Fryermuth, who he showed a lot of uh, good chemistry with. George Pickens and Chase Claypool and Najee Harris, all these players. So you want to surround quarterbacks with these players because that's usually whether or not they're going to be good. So I am going to side. Kenny Pickett is also very underratedly athletic. He's like one of those um, Aaron Rodgers-ish type guys or even like Joe Burrow where everyone likes to be, oh, they're like underratedly athletic. They'll probably end the year with like 300, 350 rushing yards, right? And that's it's a nice little add-on for, uh, for fantasy players. So Kenny Pickett's a dude that if you are down bad in super flex leagues and he is available uh it's 12 team or something like that where quarterbacks are not readily available yeah you're spending a lot of fucking money on this dude okay you're spending a lot of your budget on this dude make sure that you shore him up so kenny pickett in one qb leagues i mean he ain't going to be the difference maker for you so i'd probably go ahead and stream somebody like marcus mariota or someone who's doing a little bit better already for you so we don't have to worry about that Tua might be out for a minute. I don't really know the deal. He's already been ruled out. So Tay Bridgewater becomes like a streamer for super flexes. Obviously, keep an eye on like Bailey Zapp, Zappy. I don't know how they say these things, but whatever. Kenny Pickett's like the prize here for super flex leagues. So yes, you are dropping a fat amount of your fab on him if you are in super flex leagues. If we look at my overall top pickups for the week, again, we have my rankings all the way up to the 32nd player in flex spots. But we'll run through the top 10 real quick for you. So we have Brian Robinson, my number one pickup, if he is somehow available in your league. I would spend 25 to 30% on him. He's coming by this week, apparently. And Antonio Gibson is clearly, uh, as the kids on TikTok would say, not him. He's been getting worse and worse since that week one performance. It is now a three-way backfield between him. I can't even remember the other dude who's behind him and then J.D. McKissick. So he's probably going to be out of that backfield sooner rather than later. Brian Robinson was already taking that spot. So I've been saying Brian Robinson for like three weeks now. He's probably not available in your league. But if he is, he would be on my number one pickup. George Pickens, if he was dropped in your league because he hasn't really played up to par so far. We just talked about Kenny Pickett. And George Pickens had over 100 receiving yards in this game. So he showed a lot of chemistry with Pickens. He showed a lot of chemistry with Pat Fryermuth. So new quarterback could mean new target distribution. Claypool got like nothing going on there. Deontay Johnson took a little bit of a hit. So George Pickens is the dude who is the rookie who takes a little while to get assimilated. And then once he does, goes crazy with it. All right, so George Pickens needs to be rostered. These are all the dudes that we've been talking about as rookies. You know, we we said you got to go grab Alave. You got to go grab all those guys earlier on. And now the Pickens has showed that he seems to be the guy, the number two there. You want to go in on Pickens deep. You want to go heavy. You want you want to get in there on Picky. All right. Next up, we have Tyler Algier running back for the Atlanta Falcons. We know Cordell Patterson has landed himself on the IR. He's at least out for four Weeks, man. RIP to Cordy P. RIP to Crispy Patterson, the best to ever done do it. Tyler Azure filled in nicely. 10 for 82. He's a guy who continuously gets like eight to 10 carries a game. Hasn't showed a lot of explosiveness, but he did in this one. He's, you know, he's obviously a big time producer back at BYU. It's a weird situation because of one, they play Tampa Bay this upcoming week, so you're not starting anyone in the Atlanta backfield. Two, they also gave Caleb Huntley the backup backup. A couple goal line scores. So there will be a committee here in Atlanta, most likely. I think they do want to give Tyler Azure, the guy that they just drafted this year, the chance to kind of run away with the job for the time being until Corderell gets back. I'm not going overly crazy about this kid because the matchup and the schedules are tough right now, and Corderell will be back sooner rather than later after his IR stint. Um, so Tyler is a guy that if you need running back help, I think you could put him into your flex spot 
preferably not this week, but I would throw 12, 15, 17% of your budget on him if you're really, really desperate at running back. Michael Gallup made his return, scored a touchdown. He's obviously going to be the number two in Dallas. Dak will also be back pretty soon, so Gallup obviously needs to be picked up if he's available. Rashad White continues to be the dude that I want to make sure I'm stashing. He's starting to get more and more involved. He caught five passes. He had as many rushing attempts as Leonard Fournette in this previous game. So Rashad White, extremely athletic, extremely high upside. He's a dude that could be a league winner down the stretch. So if Rashad White is dropped, right, he's not getting any production. So people are kind of like backing off him, I'm sure. Rashad White's the guy you look for. Isaiah McKenzie's the other guy I'm really excited about because Jamison Crowder now is out for the season. Gabriel Davis has been dealing with the foot ankle injury and he's not shown up at all because he's been injured. But McKenzie also left this game with a concussion. He'll probably be back in a week, possibly not miss any time, whatever the case may be. McKenzie seems to be the second target here if um, Davis Hill banged up. Crowder's out of the picture now. So McKenzie's like a sneaky guy. He scored three touchdowns in four weeks so far. So McKenzie's a guy that I uh, I liked a lot in the summer, and I think he's just going to be forced into a bigger and bigger and bigger role as the year progresses. So McKenzie is a dude that if you need wide receiver or flex help, I would throw you know 10% of a fab on that guy. All right. Then we have two running backs. We have Raheem Mostert and Mike Boone. We're playing the same game over and over again with Raheem Mostert. It's just like, oh, he did it this week. We like him. He didn't do it this week. We don't like him anymore. Chase Edmonds is the guy. You're playing whack-a-mole with Mostert. Do what you want with him. I'm not spending a lot of money on him because this week it's going to be Chase Edmonds. The next week it's going to be him again. So I'm not going overly crazy. We know what the situation here is in Miami, despite him being the one coming off the big game. Chase Edmonds might get goal line carry. Chase Edmonds is going to be the pass catching back. So it's all over the place. We also don't know how long Tua is going to be out for. Can Teddy really command that offense down the field for scoring opportunities? I think he'll be fine, but I'm not going overly in on uh, Raheem Mostert. We have Mike Boone. The next guy up here. Um, I talked about him in the Monday live stream. So Javante is obviously out for the year. Melvin's going to be the guy. Mike Boone might be the secondary guy, but Animal was actually talking about, he's like, yo, they're definitely going to bring in a veteran. Mike Boone's going to end up being third string. And they ended up signing Latavius Murray. I don't know if he'll play this week. I don't even know if he'll play next week, but he'll be on the field soon and it'll probably turn into a three-way committee. Latavius Murray's like the dude that like, you got you got a reservation at Carbone for four people. Day of shows up, and then your homie's like, hey, can I bring my girlfriend? Can I bring my friend in here? And you call the restaurant, and they're like, no, this is fucking Carbone, my guy. You can't turn a four-person reservation into five here because there are dudes like Kevin Durant trying to get in this goddamn restaurant. Like, Latavius Murray is the fifth person at the table. They're just ruining everything for everybody. Like, show some fucking respect. Show some awareness. There are people trying to get things done here, Latavius, and you continue to ruin them. So he's going to ruin things for Mike Boone. While I was kind of excited immediately, Mike Boone's not really a pass catcher. I think they trust Melvin Gordon on the goal line. I think he's a better pass catcher. We also don't even know if this offense is really any good. So right now, I feel like Mike Boone is like a 2-3 possibly in this offense. So I'm not going to get overly excited about him. Christian Watson is the other guy that I want you to keep an eye on because Christian Watson started to get some play time in this one. And I think the Packers offense is going to start figuring it out piece by piece. And they're doing it by experimenting with their playmakers. Romeo Dobbs breakout. Alan Lazard had a big game. Christian Watson scored a touchdown on an end around, but he's really athletic. They used him a lot on those types of end arounds in college, so I'm not surprised that they're incorporating that more and more into it. He's going to get more snaps. He's going to continue to get more playing time, and I think he's going to have some breakout games throughout the rest of the season. Clearly, Watkins ain't it. Clearly, Randall Cobb ain't it. Clearly, those older dudes were never a good plan from Green Bay. I think they always assumed that the younger dudes were eventually going to come and break out, and they hope one of them would hit. Now they've got like a decent little group of pass catchers that will hit here and there. I trust Dobbs the most. We like Lazard here and there as a flex play, but Christian Watson is a dude I could see having a nice second half of the year. So if you have a deep bench and he's available, wouldn't hate adding him onto it. You know, Benjamin seems to be a nice little handcuff for James Conner. I'm not going in on him. The rest of the dudes are all like, you know, wishy-washy here and there. Corey Davis looked really good with Zach Wilson in his first start. So listen, again, Zach Wilson, the, the splits with him and like Elijah Moore were not good last year. So maybe he does prefer a guy like Corey Davis who's a little more stable and a little less flashy. We saw it in the first game. So Davis is a dude that you could probably put on the back of your bench and see if the chemistry between him and Zach Wilson continues to grow. At tight end, Mo Ali Cox, man, he showed out. And this Colts offense needs playmakers so badly and if Jonathan Taylor is out so Jonathan Taylor has a low ankle sprain that's not serious he could probably miss a game because they play on Thursday night and there's obviously Naeem Hines is going to get a bigger boost in touches and then there's this kid Deion Jackson out there but I'm not going crazy on either of those dudes because again I think Jonathan Taylor probably returns by next week so we might miss one game Denver's run defense has actually been really really or Denver's defense overall has actually been really really good it's been masked because their offense has been so bad and that's what everybody talks about. But we like Naeem Hines a little bit. He's probably not available on your waiver. Deion Jackson, 
you know, you could spend a dollar or two and kind of just see what happens. And maybe Jonathan Taylor's injury is a little bit worse than being reported. Shit like that. Mo Ali Cox, though, I do like because they don't really have any other red zone weapons if Jonathan Taylor is out. And it's just him and Michael Pittman, Taysom Hill, Tyler Conklin. I like Zay Jones. He was out this week and Jamal Agnew filled in and scored a couple touchdowns. But when Zay Jones is bike, he's the number two there behind Christian Kirk. So he's sneaky. Uh, we got to kind of pay attention to his injury status, though. The other dude I would... Again, keep an eye on, and this is kind of the same thing I've been talking about throughout the season, is Sky Moore, right? I said it's going to take like a month, two months for him to start assimilating more. He had a season high in snaps. He had four targets last game, and I think you're finally starting to see that the Chiefs are realizing that McCole Hardman, Juju, MVS, none of them are it. Sky Moore's going to continue to incrementally see more and more playing time. By week nine, by week ten, man, I, I think we're going to start hearing you know, sit-star questions involving Sky Moore. So if you have some room, now's the time to go get his arse. All right, a little bit of defense. Um, so Green Bay, they were, you know, they were a big pickup last week. Obviously, if you have them, hold on to them. If they're on your wire, they're playing the Giants this week, who might or might not be without Daniel Jones. Even if he is playing, it's an immobile Daniel Jones. Denver playing against Indianapolis, who will be shorthanded on offense. There's defense and very good. We have the Saints against Seattle. Don't be fooled by Geno Smith's big game. They played against Detroit Lions, possibly the worst team in the fucking NFL. Uh, Jacksonville playing Houston. Minnesota playing Chicago. All five of those matchups are at home. You love to see. They're all favored pretty big. So Green Bay, Denver, New Orleans, Jacksonville, Minnesota. And then Miami at New York Jets. Obviously, it's just Zach Wilson. He's a turnover-prone cornerback, so you want to get involved with that. But those are my favorite defensive streamers or pickups of the week if they are available in your league. Waiver wire, week five. Let's fucking get it. All right? Hit this thing if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. If you want the waiver wire rankings, fab suggestions, you can go hit up bdge.co. Click the thing that says become a member right over there. And uh, and that's how you become a member. Love y'all. And I'll see you tomorrow.